Welcome to episode 62 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today, and then applying that to those around me. I'm your host, D.L., and in this episode, I interview Josh Havaka out of Broward County, Florida. He is running for the State Libertarian Party of Florida Vice Chair. Now, regular viewers might say, D.L., I thought you were on a short break, and I am, sort of. A friend reached out and asked if I would give an interview, and I obliged. Since I'm on the subject, keep your eyes peeled, as there may be one or maybe even two more as I wrap up some prior commitments. But for now, let's get into that interview. All right, folks, so today I have with me Josh Hlavaka. He is running for the vice chair position for the Florida State Libertarian Party, the LPF, and we're going to discuss his candidacy. So, Josh, good day, and uh, how are you? Doing great, D.L. How are you doing today? You know, it's a bit rainy today here in Florida. I don't know where in Florida you are specifically, so I don't know if you got rain uh, in the way that we got it, but we got it pretty much uh, the latter half of the day. Nope, it was bright and sunny down here in Broward County today, luckily. Gotcha. Okay, so you're out of Broward right. County. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're running for the vice chair position. So I guess the first question is, uh, just so anybody that's, you know, for people that are watching, let you know, uh, I came across Josh when the Florida chapter of the Mises Caucus tweeted out, uh, well, I sort of came across, so uh, but this is my first uh, uh, familiarity, is they tweeted out their list of preferred candidates. And so I took a look at them and I was like, oh, okay, well, some of these names are new. I think out of them, there were like five that I was familiar with and the rest uh, I am not familiar with. And uh, that doesn't really necessarily mean a lot just because the um, a lot of the positions are positions that are somewhat regional. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, to a, to a degree. Uh, at any rate, so I mentioned that in a private Florida libertarian group. And one of our members added them to this long list of people that are running. And then so, uh, one of our friends, our mutual friends, Salisha, she reached out and she said, hey, would you interview Josh? And I was like, sure. And she was like, I'm going to connect you guys. And uh, so we got connected and here we are. So tell me a little bit about you. Um, I'm 31 years old. I've been living in Florida since about 2016. Originally, I was a resident of New Jersey. I mm -hmm. came to the Libertarian Party around 2012 but I didn't actually take the active member plunge until about February of this year. Okay. And so leading into that, what, what brought you into, so I guess kind of tell me, cause that's almost a 10 year span where you weren't active and then you chose to be active. So kind of a twofold question, what prevented you from being active and then what spurred you to become active? Um, well, what, prevented me was really just kind of like youthful immaturity it mm -hmm. was one part kind of um I felt like okay I'm still a, a child here and there's a this is an adult you know uh an adult game to be playing so I was okay, okay I'm a I'm still a kid let the adults go do adult things and what kind of led me here is um well I, I work for a corporate retail company um and it, about March of 2020, I was sitting on my couch in a group conference call with my boss who was telling me and about 15 other managers that we were now no longer essential. Oh. And I sat for nine months. Um, I was actually one of the last stores for my company, not only in the state of Florida, but nationwide to reopen. So I, I sat for a very long time. And Unfortunately, when you get a lot of time to just kind of sit and toil, you think about things and you kind of reevaluate what's important to you anymore. And gotcha. you, seeing everything that's going on, you know, coming out of the uh, the 20, uh, 2020 election cycle, I was just I was really disappointed with what I saw out of the LP. It was a lot of uh, 
a lot of infighting and mm -hmm. Twitter flame wars and just, right. you know, I, I wasn't seeing a lot of what I thought was, you know, hope for the future. And that was where I was, okay, you have two choices here. Either we can get involved and start making a change and be the change we want to see, mm -hmm. or we can sit back and keep letting it go the way it is. And I can be just another keyboard warrior complaining online about how they don't do this or they don't do that. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So you, you took the plunge. Did you get involved first with your local affiliate or did you just kind of jump there and then kind of jump up and say, all right, let's, uh, let's take it to the state level and let's, you know, let's really go, at, go at it there. Um, I actually, you know, as soon as I made the decision, I tried to make immediate contact with my county affiliate. I actually right. ended up doing pretty quickly and um, almost immediately was getting involved, you know, participating in events, coming to meetings. Yeah. Um, they voted me in as an active executive committee member back in mm -hmm. March. And it's just kind of been full steam ahead. I've plunged head first in there. I'm on their events committee. Yeah, I've been helping coordinate stuff. I was just a project manager manager for one of our last events. So, you know, okay. I, I, I'm taking on as much as they're willing to give me. And, you know, so far, as I feel like I've done a pretty decent job. Good. Wait, what was the last event that you guys had? Um, it was at, the last uh, technical event was actually our executive committee meeting last night. Mm -hmm. But the last um, like event, I guess you would say, outside of normal business meetings, we had a... a would actually, I think, be the beach walk that I uh, that I hosted. Okay, and what uh, what did that entail? Um, we you know we got out there and it was really more of an outreach event. So we took the uh, the Nolan political quiz, the world's smallest political quiz, mm -hmm. with the Nolan chart out, and right. uh, just kind of stood out there for about three four hours out on the beach, talking with people, filling out surveys, you know, passing out information and flyers to different residents, and just kind of talking about libertarianism and trying to recruit for the party. Good, good. Our, our last event, so I'm the, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm also the chair in, yes. uh, here in Duval. And our last event was, um, it wasn't as spectacular as I had kind of envisioned it in my mm -hmm. mind, but it was a, um, it was a cookout. We called it the Defiance Cookout. Okay. And what stirred that was when the current president said, uh, two months ago, maybe, I think it was two months ago, he said something along the lines of, you know, hey, if you are good citizens and you go and get your shot and you, you know, you wear your mask, you know, maybe you can have, um, you know, a grill out with, you know, a few family and friends, but not too many. And I was like, for Independence Day. And I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> Independence Day in in this the government is you know how, whatever you think about the government the idea of independence day the government telling you how big of a party you can have to celebrate independence day in a country where independence day was literally independence from a government just seemed really awful and i was just like no so i said you know what? we're gonna have a defiance cookout and when it started it was definitely a lot more um spicy because like, <laughs> um, you know, that's when there was still kind of like this, um, you know, you need to wear a mask, even if you're outside mm -hmm. attitude, it was like really strong at that time. And, uh, you know, and like, that was before our governor had put out the executive order saying all municipalities and cities are no longer allowed to enforce any kind of like mask ordinances and other things like that. So it was before all that. And then I think our city had actually just recently voted, and I don't know if this actually was covered under his executive order, but I think our city voted um, either a legislation, I think it was a legislation that would limit gatherings to like 50 people. And we can't gar guarantee 50 people, but I was like, look, if 50 people show up and another person show comes in, I'm not gonna tell them to leave. And if the you know the city decides to come over and you know give us a hard time well we'll just uh we'll deal with it at that time <laughs> like mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going to happen um, it didn't turn out to be nearly as exciting um um it was still fun don't get me wrong i don't want to squash yeah. it make it sound like it was no no fun but um we did get to talk to some people it's just the part the particular park that we chose um did not have a lot of foot traffic and so mm -hmm. 
it was a, there was a bit of a limit there with the foot traffic, but we still got to talk to some people and we actually had some new people show up. So that was really cool. And um, so it, it was fun. Uh, I like hearing about other people's events that they have, uh, you know, going out to the beach and talking to people is definitely, definitely fun. Uh, I mean, we did actually have a, a pretty large event. We actually did a bit of a coalition event with uh, mm -hmm. the Libertarian Party of Palm Beach and a few other uh, different organizations to do right. a, a million maskless march down here in Fort Lauderdale recently. Right. So that was actually, you know, really great. We had about between all the organizations and ourselves about 300, two to 300 people out there. Mm -hmm. We did a big march. Um, we got a little bit of media coverage, got on the local news down here. So, you know, that that's the type of big stuff that, you know, we're, you know, I like seeing, you know, defiant, you know, defiance cookout you did. That's awesome. I wish we could see more people doing that, honestly. Right. And, and even though it wasn't a lot of people, you know, I think the, the value comes into doing it because mm -hmm. if you continually do things as an affiliate, you look back and you realize that the first thing that you did probably wasn't very impressive, especially compared to future things. So as you go along, you get more, man, more, more momentum, you get stronger ideas, you learn what works, what doesn't work. So in, in that sense, I think it was wonderful because it gave us a, a lot of insight. Then it was also still wonderful because we talked to, I don't know, five, six, seven people, which is, you know, sometimes for us, that can be a lot, you know, yeah. especially on a, especially on something like this, where, you know, considering the, the location and the event and, you know, the, the, the challenges in promoting something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I thought it was pretty good and, you know, we're going to, we're going to probably have another cookout because we have some leftover uh, burgers and <laughs> food that's in my my freezer now. So, so that's awesome. So, a uh, question for you. So we, yes. um, uh, so I I learned about you through the uh, somewhat through the the uh, Mises Caucus Twitter post, and then okay. Celicia, who is a I'm not particularly sure of her role, but I know that she is affiliated with the Florida Mises chapter. So, are you a Mises member, Mises Caucus member as well? Yes, I am. Gotcha. And what took you there? Or were you or were you a Mises Caucus member before you got active? Um, I actually kind of got active the same time I became a caucus member. It kind of stemmed from, as you know, I was kind of looking to get involved and in researching who, who and what I was getting involved into. I caught in, it was a blog article from Reason Magazine on right. my Facebook that was, where does the Libertarian Party go next? And mm -hmm. it had a couple different options or where does the Liberty Movement more ever go next? Do we go the way of someone like Austin Peterson that we had who ran for president in 2016 for our party? And mm -hmm. when he didn't get nominated, you know, he uh, he changed affiliation um, or it could be, you know, we could go a different way. We could try, you know, a different mold, run local candidates, move mm -hmm. something different. And that was when I saw Angela McArdle on there. Mm -hmm. And I was, wow, like, you know, she kind of really spoke to what I was, you know, talking about is get together, let's start running local candidates, let's start getting members involved, let's start recruiting new members. So that way, the members who are involved have support on what they're doing at the lower levels. And, you know, that was kind of what inspired me. That's why I want to push something, you know, at least in the LPF that is really focused around getting funds raised so that way we can get activists out there and have events to recruit new members and get those members participating in a way that's going to spread liberty through florida gotcha gotcha so the that that you know i i guess that leads me to another question here is the uh is the mises caucus trying to take over florida i wouldn't call it a takeover it, you know a takeover <laughs> implies that there's actually something that you know, needs to, or someone that needs to be taken over. And there's really not out here. Like, right. it's, you know, it, it's just, and, and, you know, I can only speak for my own personal opinion. I don't speak for anybody else, but, sure. you know, th there's a lot of people out here who've been doing a lot of really good work for a really long time. Right. And, you know, it, this is a very, uh, it can be a very challenging, uh, a challenging life to lead the life of Liberty sometimes. And, oh, you yeah. know, people, you know, it's something I learned as a kid was that many hands make light work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we can get more people out there, if we can get people involved, 
then that's going to make it easier for those people to either a move up the ladder and continue to help the party in bigger and different ways or get back down the ladder in a positive way and help encourage and support their local county affiliates, which right. in here in Florida, I'd love to see more affiliate support. We have affiliates, but you know, sometimes there isn't always the best support that we could be giving them. Gotcha. Just for the record, I only meant that as a joke, just because I do keep tabs on what's going on to the best of my ability on Facebook and on Twitter. And I know that the Mises Caucus, uh, they, they, they are using the language of takeover. And, you know, they've been kind of celebrating some wins in different states where they've had a number of members who have ascended to various positions. So I, I, jo I say it jokingly, I'm not a caucus member, but I think I share a similar view as do many of my peers here in Florida. Mm -hmm. And that's either we're... Uh, you, you, we have some some people that are members, and then we have, I think, a lot of people who aren't members, but they're not hostile, and in many ways uh, might be sympathetic to the efforts that the Mises Caucus is trying to uh, pursue. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not really a big deal to me. I just, you know, I think it's kind of, I, I'm not a fan of the language, don't get me wrong. I, I think that there are some problems with it, but I'm not worried about it either. I'm just like, hey, you know, if uh, I kind of look at it like, hey, if 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 they um, if they mobilize, if the Mises Caucus mobilizes in Florida, and let's just say that uh, they mobilize to the point where they can get the votes for the people that they would prefer to be in particular positions, mm -hmm. well, I mean that's the way that things work, you know. And if the other side, whoever they may be, whether they're just you know, hostile or whether they're like, eh, you know, I think I prefer this caucus, you know, instead, um, should have mobilized harder, kind of like on the free market, like, you know, mm -hmm. same, same thing I would tell my son if he comes yeah. home one day and he's like, hey, dad, I didn't win. And he's, you know, boo boo lipping. I'll be like, well, you know, it's unfortunate that you didn't win, but the way to win is to work harder and never underestimate your competitors. So, yep. Um, so I, you know, I'm okay with it. I, and, and like I yeah. said, I know five of the people, uh, personally. And, um, well, I think four of them, I know personally that I've met one I'm getting to know, but mostly online. And so far I don't have any issues with any of those five, uh, the rest <laughs> of them, the other 11, cause I think there were 16 candidates that the Mises caucus has said, Hey, here are preferred candidates. The other 11, I'm just not familiar with. So I don't yes. have any issues with them. I just. I don't know you, not you, but you know, I don't know them. <laughs> no, I understand very well. But I look. I think I said something like this a while back on, on, on Twitter. I think I said something like, I, I was making a joke, and I said, "Hey, if anybody comes to Florida, and um, they're trying to take over Florida, just be warned, we have Gators." And I said something like, "Either one, if you lose, you'll be fed to the Gators, or two, if you win." then you'll have to fend off the gators. So one way or another, you're dealing with gators. And I'm like, but you know, it's just it was kind of light, lighthearted way of saying like, you yeah. know, you come to Florida and if you win, you win. Like, and that's the way it works. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I have my issues with the, the, the takeover language as well. Cause it, you know, I, I don't really see the, the Mises caucus movement that's going through the, uh, the LP right now is a, a mm -hmm. takeover per se. Because in some places, you know, there it, you could perceive it as such, you know, depending on how you want to look at it. But like here in Florida, it doesn't. Th there's no takeover happening. It's no. we're just running candidates. If either we get in or we don't. If we don't, right. then hey, you know, either it means that, like you said, with the free market, we somebody didn't see the value in what we were pushing. At right. the same time, I'd prefer to look at it as more of a, a youth and energy movement in the LP. You know, right. our our caucus, you know, tends to skew a little younger. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of energy sometimes put in the wrong directions, we can admit. Sure. But, you know, the, it, there's a lot of, oh, I've seen a lot of positive, you know. Right. There's a lot of good stuff coming out in other states. There's a lot of uh, collaboration mm -hmm. between different state members. And, you know, I think the most important thing is there's a lot of education going on. 
gotcha. on how to be a libertarian. And I don't mean that in the sense of, you know, how to be a real libertarian when we all argue on Twitter. Right. What I mean is, is how to go about the parliamentary process, how to write bylaws or the uh, constitutions, how to mm -hmm. form state affiliates. And, you know, just my personal experience here in Florida is even non-Mises caucus members, they've been very welcoming. They've been very open to helping our younger, newer members who were, mm -hmm. you know, a little less sure of themselves or not as uh, familiarized with the process as, right. you know, some of the, you know, the older members who are coming in. So, you know, that's why I say like the hot, you know, the, the takeover language is a little, uh, a little off point. And it's, it's not really a, a, a takeover. It's just, you know, it, it's a youth movement, it's reinforcements, it's support for, you know, maybe some areas who maybe not might not have had that support before, you right. know, it, it's rallying. I look at it as rallying the troops is we have a lot of little L libertarians scared to take that plunge into the big L. And I feel like that Mises caucus is the, the kind of the, uh, the go between where we kind of bring you in, show you, hey, this is how the parties run. We give you, you know, we teach you how to go about, you know, doing what we need, you know, what needs to get done at a party level. At, and then we're, you know, every day pushing people out into their county affiliates. Hey, go out there. They have a meeting. Go out there. They have an event. Go out there. They have, you know, something to do that another face, another hand might be something valuable to them. Right. No, I agree. And it's interesting. I noted just recently that for all the hate that the Mises caucus in general gets, it's the one that has been the most active in reaching out to me, not only as a person, but also as an affiliate chair. So for instance, and we have a Florida has a private uh, group where we kind of discuss different activist kind of ideas and stuff like that. And I posted in there the a screenshot of Duval County's three candidates who are um, uh, who are now um, I want to say registered, but that's not the right word. They are um, they have filed and they have filed with the local city and they're going to run. We're going to have two candidates who are running for specific city council seats and one who is going to run for an at large seat. And I'm really excited. I've been talking with them and, you know, there's, they're, now they're not Mises. They don't really know all about the whole Mises thing necessarily. I sent them some information and I said, hey, maybe, you know, connect with them. I know that the Mises caucus does support candidates uh, financially as well. So, you know, take a look at their stuff, reach out to them. They're going to come to the convention. I'm going to make sure to introduce them to, to different people. And, um, but I posted that and within like 30 minutes, uh, so, uh, somebody contacted me and said, hey, I see that you got some candidates running check this link out, send it to them. The Mises caucus might be, you know, willing to support them uh, financially, you know, and, uh, but I've got that. I've gotten emails. I get an email probably once a week, once every other week, I think from the Mises caucus. Um, you know, I, I get at least two emails a month um, Mises related. I, I know that for sure. It might be more than two. Um, but I get them all the time, you know, so I've got emails, I'm getting people reaching out and saying, hey, you got candidates, we might be, you know, willing to help them out. Uh, they, they've got this energy, there is, you know, you look on Twitter, and I know that Twitter is not real life, but I think it does kind <laughs> of give you an idea of what's going on a little bit. And I, I go on there and I see that they have a main Mises caucus group. And then you have all these Mises caucus groups for the different states, you know, I don't know how many different mm -hmm. states are that, that they actually have them up and running. Uh, but I know that there's, a, uh, like I'm connected to several of them, right? And so I see all this, like you said, this energy and this act action that they're getting out there and they're doing. And yeah, I get it. I'm, I, I mean, I don't know if, how much you know about me, but I'm, I like to bill myself as the, uh, the most critical person of the Mises caucus who is not at war with them. Because um, I've had some pretty strong words in their Facebook group, you know, on things that I disagree with, uh, virtually every one of their high profile members, I've, you know, had an exchange and said, you know, I, I, I disagree. I think this is wrong. I think you need to, you need to back up a little bit. You know, I mean, you know, Michael Heiss, Dave Smith, uh, Joshua Smith, you, you know, like 
you know, and I'm not saying that there's anything bad about these guys. I'm just saying, you know, despite the fact that I have been pushing back on things that I disagree with, uh, I feel like they've been very receptive to me, but I also do it in a way that's productive. That's, that's a big difference. I think, you know, I don't just get yeah. on there and trash talk somebody and say, Oh, you guys are, you know, terrible racist, uh, change your ways <laughs> and then expect them to go, you know, what do you mean? Like, I don't understand. Like, can you, ex can you explain that a little further? Like, I know that that yes. doesn't work. So if I've got something to say, I, I'm trying to try to be concise and to the point. But uh, and, anyway, you know, yeah, I mean, that's well, appreciated. Ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say that's appreciated. And I mean, it, it, you know, and once again, I can only speak for myself, but even the people that are at war with us, like, you know, maybe we can find, maybe we should be finding a way to, you know, make a truce over this, you know, right. there's a lot of infighting. And unfortunately, the people who are quote unquote at war with the Mises caucus, if you right. will, are really great libertarians and they're doing really great things. And, you yeah. know, it, it's really disappointing that, you know, unfortunately, like you said, some hope high profile members or, you know, some, uh, some less than a stellar actor sometimes can, you know, ruin that reputation. Cause sure. once again, just cause we don't necessarily agree on something doesn't mean we can't work together. Right. You know, it, it, that, that's another big thing I'm hoping to, you know, maybe accomplish is, you know, start to build, you know, mend those bridges between those members who are at war with us and those members who just want to get work done. And, you know, we don't really see the value in why are we fighting? Right. You know, it's interesting, um, just as a sidebar, I, I always like to try to throw in a story of, of, about life if I can, uh, if I can help it. But, I, you know, it reminds me year, many, many years ago when I was a teenager, uh, I, I don't want to say I was at war, but for lack of a better word, I was at war with my mom. And so, you know, it was just like I was just headbutting and my mom was a very dominant person. So, you know, you hear about all these strong women. My mom was strong and then some. Okay, so she was like, uh, you know, she was she was not much bigger than me. She was a little bit taller, but she was, you know, pretty scrawny <laughs> and she would strike fear in hearts of men that were like, you know, six and a half foot tall, you know, outweighing her by many pounds. And but she was just a ferocious woman. And um, I remember one day I decided, OK, this has just got to stop. Like we we got to quit being at war with each other. And you know what happens when you start getting at, at war with people every little slight becomes the biggest thing in the world mm -hmm. from both directions. Right. Yep. And so I was like, we gotta, we gotta stop this. So one day I remember, I, we, I don't remember what we were arguing about. Um, but I was like, all right, this is the opportunity. So I was just like, mom, I love you. Is it? That's all I said. And she was like, she kept, you know, yelling at me or something or whatever. And I was just like, mom, I love you. And then like, after like the third time, she's like, you're just saying that to try to get me to stop yelling at you. All right. And I was like, no, 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 it's mm -hmm. actually true. You know? And I think when it comes to the Libertarian Party, I think what happened, and this is what I tell both sides, right? When I, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to, whether I'm talking to, you know, people who identify more with the Pragmatic Caucus or, you know, no caucus and they just, you know, but they're still mad at the Mises Caucus or if I'm talking to people who are in the Mises Caucus, I'm like, look, you be the change. Don't worry about that person. You, you first, right? Exactly. And then be persistent in that same way that I was. I was just like, I was being persistent. Because what happens is when two people are fighting, um, somebody has to draw the line and say, we're done. But just because they draw, they drew a line, just because they said, okay, I'm going to start behaving now or I'm going to start changing. One, it doesn't mean that they're always going to get it right. And then two, it, it definitely means, doesn't mean that the other person is going to immediately believe them. Right. So my mom, mm -hmm. she immediately just thought, okay, it's like some sort of ruse. You know, he's just playing some sort of game, but it really wasn't. And, you know, and that was kind of the beginning. And it's it's not that, you know, I, and I'm not trashing my mom here. Like my mom was a great person, but because we were in conflict, one of us had to, to say this is enough and then stick with it until the other person believed it, right? And made it easier for them. So I just wanted to go on that kind of little small tangent there. So I, I, I apologize. I know we're actually here to talk about you. And <laughs> no, it's great. So um, I was taking a look at your Josh. Uh, I'm, I'm so working. I'm working so hard on your last name. Josh Hilbaka, if I, if, I, if I think I got that right. Good. Or LPF, good enough, right? <laughs> sure. 
for LPF Chair uh, Facebook page. And on there, I noticed that yeah. you had said something uh, to the effect of you wanted to bring a new, quote, I'm quoting here now, new, fresh mm -hmm. approach to the vice, uh, to vice chair position. So I'm curious, what is this new and fresh approach that you're bringing? What's new and different uh, about you than what maybe the Florida delegates have seen before? Okay, so I mean, obviously, I'm a little, you know, a little younger, a little newer to the party, mm -hmm. but you know, that I don't see that as a negative. I, you know, I come from a background in events planning, and, you mm -hmm. know, I, I did a lot of different kind of uh, supply and logistics work. And, you know, I come from a retail background. So I mean, okay. it, you know, I'm all about m making money and, you know, okay. dealing with people one on one, like I do in my day to day income making job, you know, I'm dealing with people face to face. And, right. you know, kind of like I said earlier, the three things I want to build upon in the LPF is mm -hmm. participation, recruiting and fundraising. And, okay. you know, I, I love when that, that comes up is, you know, fundraising is a great perspective here, because what more could we do? There's a ton more we could do, we could open mm -hmm. up an LPF shop, you know, I know that's something that, you know, I don't know if it's been proposed or not. But in it 2021, has. It has. Oh, well, yeah. You know, I don't know why it hasn't run yet. That's that should be that's a great money making opportunity. You know, the way supply has changed nowadays, you right. can start a store with literally no product and, you know, make it work. And even if you can, it's, you know, it, certain things, it's building upon that and looking at what the market wants. Is there a demand right. for it? Listen to your customers. Um, you know, I want to see more participation but that also comes from getting those participants engaged with their county affiliates you know okay i've spent the last couple of days getting messages from different people around the state and that's been a big issue i've heard is i can't contact my uh my county affiliate or they're non-responsive or mm -hmm. i've reached out to the lpf about something or wanting to get involved or you know i got ghosted after two fo a phone call or an email and you know, it's disappointing. There's people, a lot of people who want to get out there, who want to be a part of this and, you know, we're not reaching them. And then as well, it's, you know, we have some, uh, some members who, you know, they, they've come, they've gone, you know, we have some members that they, you know, they've been around a little while, but they don't even know who the chair of the party is for the state. Sometimes, you know, mm. I feel like, you know, when I'm having to educate, you know, members who are, you know, well more tenured than me, it, you know, it, it, it comes back to a participation thing. Do you know what's going on around you? Are we communicating well? Are we giving you opportunities to get involved and learn about different people in the state? You know, I, I get we're, uh, we're a very decentralized group and, you know, we don't want to, we don't want no extra boundaries and parameters, but, you know, I'd love to see more collaboration around the state too. Just bringing people in, you know, a little bit more movement around, you know, Let's make those trips up. Hey, us in Broward, maybe we can go out to, you know, an event. And I don't know, uh, come up to Duval, maybe sometime, get a couple members, you know, right. send delegations down. You know, I don't know why we're not doing more like co-op events where, hey, maybe, I don't know, Pasco and Hillsborough get together, you know, when Pasco gets mm -hmm. an affiliate and they do an event together out there. You know, there's a lot of right. people. Maybe that's going to create more uh, difference in there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I, and that was actually going to be my, my next question is going into those three things and you're talking about, you know, like you said, participation, recruitment and fundraising. So do you have specific ideas on each one of those three that you think will be beneficial to the different affiliates or even for new affiliates? Um, well, I mean, the biggest thing I think, you know, when it comes to participation and recruitment is, you know, it goes back to affiliate support is, mm -hmm. you know, what more can we be doing to, you know, affiliate that and, you know, th there needs to be a better line of communication between the affiliates and the LPF, you know, out in, in addition to the region reps as well, you know, how, what right. can we do for you? And then what can, you know, how are you, you know, kind of, okay what can we do to help you guys to make it so that way you're bringing more members into the party and that we can fundraise more, you know, the, uh, the recruitment aspect, uh, it just comes back. Like I said, it's a lot of people, they want to get involved, but they reach out to their affiliate and there's just, it's unresponsiveness. You know, I want to kind of create a system where they come in and, you know, part of the membership committee is 
reaching out to them and then making sure and following up with those county affiliates to make sure that they're getting those new members in the door possibly. Um, when it comes to participation, it's, you know, giving more opportunities. You know, I see Broward County, we do a lot of events, but I can't speak on a lot of other places. You know, they don't, you know, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Do they just, they did not have the manpower? Let's get the manpower. Is it, they don't have the funds? Let's get them funds. If it's, they don't have the, the logistics ability, let's get, you know, let's figure out the logistics together. You know, gotcha. that that's kind of a, what I'm looking at. And then fundraising, it, it comes back to, you know, what more can we do? You know, I don't have any super solid ideas outside of the, 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 the uh, LPF store right now. But that, that's where also collaboration comes in. You know, there's a lot of good people that are all around here. And, you know, I, I've been really open to listening to ideas. I've been taking in, once again, a lot of information, you know, mm -hmm. hearing people out. What do you want to see? You know, this really isn't so much about what I want. You know, I kind of wanted to get out there and then let me hear what you want. And then let's figure out, you know, together, is it realistic? Can it work? And if it is realistic and can it work, how can I help you make that goal achievable right. for you? Because I want to put the power in your hands where you can go out and achieve those goals. And then that's going to further the LPF's initiative. Gotcha. All right. You ready for a couple of tough questions? Sure. All right. They're not going to be, they're not, they're not gotchas again, but they are tough. And I think they're, I think they're very relevant for a position yeah. um, like the vice chair of the state party. So yes. let's say that the voters, the delegates, they vote you in and they say, all right, well, you know, now we've got Josh Havaka. He's our new vice chair. And let's just say six months, one year down the road. Either one, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You can you can choose one, you can just be generic, it doesn't matter. But you know, just some distant time after you've been in there and you've had time to accomplish stuff. Yes. How do we judge you? What what are the merits that we judge you by? You know, and, and you know, what do you want to be judged by? When we come back and say, like if I were to come back and say nine months and i would say let's have an interview what would you want me to judge you on i would want you to judge me on uh the increase in county affiliates around the state mm -hmm. um i would want to be judged on you know the the membership roles have they increased or have they stayed stagnant and then you know i'd want to be judged on my profit and loss report just like i would at my my income making job and you know, I, I, at the end of the day, if you're making money, you know, when it comes to fundraising, that's what's making sense. Gotcha. So you plan on being part of the fundraising committee if you're not already? I mean, the, the vice chair is sits on every committee as ex officio. So yes, right, we, right, right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I would absolutely, you know, I'm, you know, my plan is, is that, you know, I want to, you know, have good committee chairs who can do, mm -hmm. you know, have come to me with good ideas. And, you know, like I said, empower them to have those good ideas and that, to chase them down you push more people in their committee so that way they can make those things happen work on a couple different projects at once if they see fit and then you know I, i'm just kind of there to you know be the uh, the you know the the the, the dad of the, the committee hey what are we doing in here are we getting stuff gotcha. done in here or are we we not if we're not then you know i need to figure out if it's uh, you know is it's a skill issue and you know what can i do to help or is it a will issue? And, you know, why aren't we, you know, why aren't we accomplishing anything in here? Gotcha. Okay. Um, second tough question. Might sure. be a little bit tougher than the, than the last one. Um, what is the, what will be the biggest challenge for you personally? And what do you, what plans do you have to to resolve that or handle that or, you know, uh, limit the the impact, you know, and, and, and if you don't understand what I mean, I'm, I'm just saying like, I know that I'm not always good at administration. So mm -hmm. I may get a little bit slack. So I have to try to do things to try to compensate and make sure that I don't become too slack. So what's the biggest challenge that you think that you're going to have personally with this role? And then what are you going to do uh, to minimize any negative impact you know the biggest thing is you know and i'm sure a lot of our, our members can say this is just trying to take on too much at once mm -hmm. and then it becomes a situation where you, you you're doing a lot of everything but you're not really accomplishing anything so you know it, it 
if I had to say one thing, it's, you know, maybe taking on too much work, but that's where mm-hmm. it comes back around to, uh, you know, I, I want to have good committee of, you know, committee chairs who are going to, you know, get good work done, come up with good ideas, who can lead and manage their committees and their teams, you know, very effectively. So right. that way, like I said, I'm just kind of dropping in there, seeing what's going on making sure that they're staying, keeping me up to speed so that I can keep the chair up to speed on what's going on with his committees. And, you know, once again, if there is an issue in there, or there's a problem, you know, I can address it and help make it help make it better if possible. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That's fair. Um, you know, I, it, it, it's interesting, you know, you talk to people and not necessarily people running as candidates, but you just talk to people in general and, you know, it's interesting that a lot of people have never really thought about what their weakness is. And, you know, I, of course, everybody has one and it's different for everyone. And if you know your weakness, then, you know, you can obviously work on it, but then you can also take measures to try to help uh, reduce the negative impact from that weakness, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just interesting um, that so many people don't really think about it. You know, and I guess it's maybe why so many people aren't suited for leadership, I guess. All right. Uh, I don't have a whole, whole bunch of other questions. And, you know, I don't know what else you, you want to talk about. We could talk about anything else and maybe they'll just kind of stir some things in my mind. Again, you know, this was kind of, you know, for people watching, this was kind of short notice. And usually I spend, you know, sometimes a great deal of time sitting down thinking. I'll research if I don't know the person very well. I'll, I'll start doing as much research as I can. And, you know, I'll, I will think about the different questions. Um, I only got connected with you, like, literally, like, two days ago. <laughs> so, um, so there wasn't a whole lot of conversation um, mm-hmm. to, to have ahead of time. There wasn't a whole lot of, you know, I mean, yes, I went out and I looked around on social media, mostly just your page, your, your, your page for the vice chair to kind of see, mm-hmm. okay, what are you about? What kind of questions might I have? for you based on that. Um, I don't know what else you want to talk about. Uh, I don't want um, to I'm, quick. No, I was going to say, if you don't, you know, if you don't mind, I, you know, I'd like to, you know, take a second to plug our, one of our local candidates down here in uh, Broward County. We're running a uh, Mike Termont for uh, okay. Florida C- Congress 20, Alcee Hastings old seat. Okay. Um, I'm actually part of his campaign team as well right now. So I mean, mm-hmm. You know, if, if you're listening and you're down here in Florida 20, you know, definitely reach out. Give us a follow on Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can find him at Mike Termont for Congress. That's T-E-R-M-A-A-T. And then if you want to go to his website, it's MikeTermont2022.com. So really, if once again, if you're out here in the in Broward County, give him a look up, you know. We're going to need some petitions being signed for him to get him on the ballot so we don't got to spend an extra $10,000 to right. the, the awful state to yep. get him get him on the ballot. Um, if you're not, hey, a, a share, a retweet, you know, just some interaction. It would go a million miles for us right now. He's a right. new libertarian candidate down here. You know, he, he's running in a district that is very heavily favored blue. You know, we already know that more than likely we're going to see a ton of money being spent by, you know, both sides of the, the duopoly to try and win this seat. And it, it, you know, we have primaries in November, we got the election January 11th. So once again, if you're in Florida 20, come out, please vote for Mike Termont. If you are not in Florida 20, please come out and support Mike Termont. Awesome. So um, how many votes does he need? Do you know off the, off the top of your head? How many votes does he need? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many uh, <laughs> signatures? I'm sorry. I, I said it wrong. How many signatures does he need no, to get on the ballot? Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I, I I'd have to take a shot in the dark here. I don't know how many people are in Florida right now. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Um. I mean, he needs. I believe 1,300, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going okay. to get probably about like 18 to 1,900. Right. Uh, they all have to be in Florida District 20, though, which was a little right. disappointing because. You know, it used it, prior special elections down here had been that you could petition throughout the state. So that was kind of a, a, a shot in the kneecap from from the state mm-hmm. once again. But 
you know, we're, we're getting out there. We're, we're doing a bunch of petition drives. So if you see us out, please sign, you know, help us out. Cause once again, running a candidate's expensive. If we can save some money on, you know, ballot access, that right. would be huge. Oh, absolutely. Uh, are your district lines uh, complete right down there right now? District Cause, lines? they Yeah, because ours, because uh, I'm assuming, I, I don't know a whole lot about the candidates. So if I'm speaking in ignorance, mm. let me know. I know that our city council, uh, the candidates for city council um, are kind of at a standstill, a slight standstill, because we have not redrawn our district lines. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's only affecting local or if it affects like, you know, state and, you know, congressional district lines as well. I'm assuming all district lines. Um, and so I think it's been kicked back for us until the fall. And that's, they're okay. waiting on the, um, the census to come back and then they're going to figure out the district lines and then we'll know for sure about our candidates. Gotcha. I mean, I haven't heard anything on the congressional district lines changing, but okay. you know, I, to explain district 20 a little bit, it, mm -hmm. there really is no way to explain it. You have to see it on a map. It's mm -hmm. probably one of the most horribly gerrymandered districts in the country, definitely in the state of Florida. Um, it encompasses parts of uh, Broward, Palm Beach, and Hendry County all the way in the Lake Okeechobee. And it's like a giant E with the, the, the like just arms reaching out to the ocean in Palm Beach and Broward. Like mm. it's really just, it's something just really crazy to look at. And you just kind of wonder, hmm, how did it get like this? Right. Yeah. One of our candidates had been looking at some of the past district uh, districting and he, uh, he was showing me some of the, the layouts and some of the districts wildly changed and it, it, there doesn't, it doesn't appear to be any rhyme or reason based just when you're looking at a straight map. Cause you're mm -hmm. like, what the hell did you go from there to there for? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. I haven't really dug into all of that. So I don't really know, um, you know, a whole lot about how the district uh, districting works. So I don't know if that, if it's just local that's being held up or if it's just Duval, you know, maybe Duval's for whatever reason saying, Hey, we're going to wait. I, I, I don't know. I just know that for right now, our district, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our candidates um, have to be a little bit mindful. They can't go out and get signatures just yet, because mm -hmm. if they get signatures and let me see if I get this right, I believe if the uh, the two that are running for specific city council seats get signatures and then okay. the lines are getting the lines get redrawn, I believe all the ones that they got on the on the new line, you know, outside of the new line, no mm -hmm. longer count. And then I believe with the at large, there's something weird like he has to reconfirm them or something because at large he can get signatures from anywhere in the city. So it doesn't, so he's not bound by the different districts like city council yeah. members are, but there's something weird. Like he can't just go and just start getting them because there'd be, I think it might have to do with if I'm in district say four, and then I get redrawn into five, then he needs to revalidate my petition which associated me with four instead of the new mm -hmm. one i think that's what's going on it um, sounds about right yeah but it's it's just it's like really and what we're hoping is that they um that the change doesn't occur and drastically reduce the time that they have to get signatures so we may have to go on a blitz. I, 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 I have to look into it. I don't know all the dates of everything exactly, um, but it's, it's, it's a pain because we're waiting. We're kind of at a standstill, but, but we have to yeah, be okay. So it'll be exciting. Yeah, I mean, we have two in office right now down here. Um, we oh, have yeah? Dean, yeah, we have uh, one, of our, one of our EC members is uh, the, on the historical committee for Coral Springs, Florida. And then another okay. one of ours is on the uh, budgetary committee for Wilton mm -hmm. Manors, which I live right by down here in Florida. So, you know, we have a couple, a couple guys down here who are, you know, they're in office right now, so they're not having the run, mm -hmm. but you know, we're going to be out for the next couple, uh, 
next couple of weeks after the convention with Mike canvassing and petitioning. So that's going to be some fun in the hot summer Florida sun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, man. Cause it's already. I mean, I'm up here in Jacksonville up in Northern Florida and it's already getting warm. So, I mean, it's already in the eighties. Um, so it's, you know, I can only imagine that where you are, it's, it's, it's definitely much warmer. So, and oh, it's probably, so swampy. probably more consistently warmer. We, we still had a few cooler days. They, they weren't too terribly cool. Uh, we're, we're getting to that <laughs> point now where, uh, where it's just hot. This is a hot and muggy period. It's hot. It's hot and humid all day and all, yep. all day. So, so how did you get down to Florida from New Jersey? Um, I, the mob kick you out or what? No, no, I'm I'm from South Jersey, not North Jersey. Okay, fair enough. So I, I'm 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 like Woods Jersey, not not chemical industrial plant Jersey. Okay, but okay. no, I'm no, I my mom's are actually originally from St. Petersburg. Okay, across the state, and I spent my entire life growing up where every probably almost on the clock around springtime every year. How would you guys feel about moving to Florida? How would you feel about moving to Florida? Mm -hmm. We'll get, we'll move to, and finally about 2015, my mom moved down here. We were, me and my wife were going back and forth between moving, you know, staying in Philly or going and moving to Arizona. We came down here and fell in love, man. We, the weather's great. People have been super awesome, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. great food, great stuff to do. I mean, right. There's no snow. I don't got to de-ice my car in the morning anymore. Right. I, I don't that. have to. Yeah, it's I, my face doesn't hurt. Like I, I can't imagine living any living somewhere anymore where it hurts to breathe. It's right. so cold out. Right. Are you are you familiar with Josh Smith? I, I am familiar with Josh. Okay. Yes. So yeah, he has the podcast uh, "Break the Cycle," and mm -hmm. um, he is in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. The land of the corn. And I remember when he first moved there, he was posting on Twitter and he was like, oh my God, it's going to be like, you know, negative whatever degrees. And I was like, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. not here in Florida. <laughs> yep. No, I'm all the time with all of my Northern friends. They're like, it's cold. There's three right. feet of snow on the ground. My back hurts from shoveling. I'm like, I went yep. to the beach today. Yep. Yeah, we funny. had it. I built a sandcastle. Right, right. Uh, when I, I used to live up, my dad was Air Force, so we bounced around a bit. But I was actually right. born in West Palm Beach. Um, nice. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was born there. I, I think I was raised for a few years. And then because my dad was Air Force, we moved around a bit. And uh, we ended up settling in Ohio, then moved to Indiana. And so we were basically between Indianapolis and Dayton, uh, right there on the border. And it was probably about, um, you know, 45 minutes either way to either Indianapolis or Dayton mm -hmm. in a small town called Richmond, Indiana. And I eventually just took this opportunity to move down to South Carolina. And some of my friends are actually North Carolina, right along the border. And they're in Charlotte. And um, mm -hmm. some of my friends were like, well, why are you moving? And I was like, the weather, the weather alone is enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, then I met my now wife, and she ended up getting transferred down here to Jacksonville. So nice down here, and and this is where we are. I joke with her. I'm like, you know, it's like 50 degrees. We should probably just start thinking about moving further south. I'm like, where it's not 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so it's you know it's fun. I enjoy yeah, Florida. I think it's great. Yes, I I sold my wife on the no income tax thing. Right, right, yeah. That's, that's I was like, awesome. "Hey, babe, we can we can save fifteen percent or more in our income tax by switching to Florida." <laughs> that's right. So, that's awesome. All right, so are, now I think you have a speaking uh, opportunity down at the convention, yes. right? All right, so um, I'm watching. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yep, I was going to say I'm also going to be on Tuesday the eighth, I believe, over in West Palm doing a speaking a speaking event there as well. Okay, awesome. Is that for your county or for the this particular position? Um, this is for this particular position. I'm, you know, I was, inv you know, invited to come up and speak, and you know, they're going to graciously give me some of their time at their business meeting on uh, on Tuesday. So I'm going to be going up there, talking talking to them for a little bit. So if anybody in the area is interested, please more than welcome, come out, come see me. Okay, awesome. And then um, you'll be speaking at the convention. 
I know that there's, uh, I'll probably see you at the, the Mises event. Uh, are you speaking mm -hmm. there or just the convention itself? Um, I probably will be at all of them. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Mises event is more than likely going to take place after the, uh, the, the elections okay. have gone by. So that's correct. Know. Cause it's Saturday night. You're right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I might be talking there. Um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, if they give me a shot, if not, then I'll, I'll be there having drinks and, you know, partying with the guys. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And I'll be there. I was invited to, to come out. Um, awesome. I don't know if I'll go to both events, you know, cause I'll have my, my family with me. So I'll have to yeah. potentially maybe the one at five o'clock, I probably won't go to, but then maybe the, uh, I'll go to the one at nine o'clock, uh, when, when they, they decide to go to bed and then I'll just, you know, hang out and, uh, you know, have some fun and enjoy the camaraderie with everybody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look forward to actually meeting you in person. So that'll be fun. Uh, look forward Likewise. to hearing what you have to say at the convention. Cause I believe that they give all of the people, all the candidates running, uh, like two or three minutes to, you know, speak to the, uh, why we should vote for them. So, you know, uh, good luck to you. Uh, I, you. I, 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 I'm kind of weird when it comes to endorsing candidates. So, you know, I don't, you know, I, it gets too messy <laughs> to understood a, a candidate. And, and for, particularly for me, what I like to be is I, I, you know, I like to, I like to ask challenging questions and I like to kind of be known as, you know, like that objective person that you can go to. Um, I know I, I did some more support Josh Smith for chair out of the three, was it three? I think at the time when I started supporting him, there were only two and then Joe Bishop Henchman came along and, mm -hmm. um, and then after hearing all three at the Florida convention, I, you know, stuck with uh, Joshua Smith, um, but that was, it was an interesting experience because I just kind of felt like, uh, I felt like it kind of boxed me in. Like it just, it made it harder for me to be critical and say, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, um, this and that, because, you know, you, you're supporting somebody, but at the same time, you're trying to, you know, have a conversation like on Facebook or Twitter, yeah. you know, so it was just, it was just interesting, but I, I appreciate you coming on the show and I'm, I'm glad I'm always glad when people want to run for positions. I, I think that anytime there is a position that has any less than two candidates, then, you know, whether it's the state or the affiliate or the national, we have made a mistake. You know, we didn't motivate enough people to go and say, Hey, let's compete for this particular role, you know? So, um, I know that note is always there, but I, you know, <laughs> note is not a real person. Like you don't actually install Noda. So it just means you start yeah. over. So, um, but I, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show. Good luck to you. Appreciate you we'll having the time. We'll how, yeah, absolutely. It was, you know, and it was, it was on short order. So I'm glad that you were able to make it. I'm glad that I was able to uh, make it as well, especially with the two year old. Sometimes he gets a little hectic and I wasn't mm -hmm. sure, you know, sometimes he, he burst in, I got the door locked right now, but sometimes he finds his way in, you know, there's been a few episodes in the past where he's come in. He's like, ah, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I'm everybody's watching. We're coming. <laughs> so, hey bud. But uh, I appreciate it, Josh. I don't want to hold you up too long. I, I know you've got some things to do. Um, you know, again, good luck. We'll be seeing you in just, you know, just barely a week. So that's going to be awesome. Everybody out there, Josh Havaka, if you're in Florida, you know, look him up. Uh, what's your Facebook page? Uh, it would be, uh, Josh Havaka for LPF vice chair 2021. And I'm on Twitter at Havaka, the number four LPF VC. Gotcha. All right. So make sure you check him out. If you're not familiar with him, Go follow him, you know, ping him with some questions or whatever, and, uh, you know, catch up with him at the convention for sure and ask him some questions. So, um, all right, awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and close this out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And be sure to check out other associated podcasts over at facebook.com forward slash free speech media network. Like I said at the beginning, Keep your eyes peeled as there may be one or maybe even two more episodes. And then it's a bit of a summer break for me. And remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.